Hello, I would like to welcome you on this lesson 4 of Advanced PCB Layout course. Today it's going to be very important lesson. Listen carefully, watch carefully. We are going to speak about 11 the most common high speed design rules. We will go one by one through each of them. We will explain what they actually mean and how to follow them properly. The rule number one, maintain single-ended and differential pair impedance. You already know that impedance is very important. You already know from the previous lesson how to calculate impedance. But what this actually means for you? What this means when you are doing the layout? how you are going to follow this rule. I'm going to show you this on an example. Imagine you are going to route LVDS interface. Imagine you are actually drawing tracks of these LVDS signals on layer 10. What track width? What gap between the plus minus, between positive and negative signal you have to use? So you follow this rule. First, you need to go to design guide. You have to find this table, you already know this table. You have to find the LVDS interface, that's the interface which you are routing. And you need to know what is the differential pair impedance which you have to use. Then go to your PCB stack up and find the track geometry for 100 ohm impedance on layer 10, because we are doing the layout on layer 10. From here you will get the numbers. You will get the track width, should be 0 0.085. You will get the gap, 0 0.195. So when I go to our existing design, we should see exactly these numbers. I click on LVDS, I go on layer 10, and I will highlight the tracks which need to be routed by 100 on differential pairs. These are the high speed LVDS signals. And if they are routed correctly, then the track width has to be 0 0.085. I double click on a track 0 0.085. If they are routed correctly, then the gap between these two tracks, between plus and minus, has to be 0 0.195. Reports, measure primitives, click on first track, on the second. Distance between them is 0 0.195. So these high speed signals of this LVDS interface are routed the proper way. They follow the rule number one, maintain single-ended and differential pair impedance. The rule number two, length mesh differential pair signals within pair. What does it mean? I'm going to explain. Imagine you have a differential pair signals plus the positive, which is here, and minus, which is here. And they are routed on top layer, this blue part, and on the bottom layer, this other part. You already know that the total length of the plus signal has to be very similar or exactly same as the total length of the minus signal. This is the rule which you can set in Altium, and you know how to do it, because we just spoke about it. 
So everything looks looks correct in this picture for high speed signals for example like PC Express you may want to length match this on every layer so you may want to have this length which is here plus signal on the top layer you may want to have it exactly same length as the length of this minus signal on the top layer what do you think why this is important i will try to explain it very simple as simple as possible what you would like to achieve is that the edge on plus track will travel together with the edge on the minus track so the edges travel together okay. what will happen in this case think the signal will start at the same time from here and from here and it will travel this way and this way so the signal any edge on this signal will always travel ahead of the edge on this signal it will look like this because this path is a little bit further so this edge will be always ahead of this edge what can we do about this? how we achieve that these edges will travel together? we will do a wave like this signal travels from this direction from these pins and because we have here this small wave then here the signal will need to travel a little bit longer and at this point these edges will start travel together that's the important point then when you change the layer again ideally you would like to adjust this length which is here so all the signal edges may travel together okay on each layer do something similar what do you think are there some rules how to create these waves yes it's important how you create this wave. Some design guides they suggest to do a lot of small waves. The thing is, okay, it is nice. Yeah, I understand that because you only go a little out of this tolerance. You this gap is only a little bit bigger, so it is still the impedance is still quite good problem is if this length is too big if you need to adjust quite a long length you would have to do a lot of these small waves to achieve the length which you need and then question is uh, when the edges will start actually travel together and uh, is it really good to have so long distance with the waves? So this is what I normally do. I create one bigger wave on the beginning of the signal and then from this point the edges travel together. So it's very important you length match differential pairs within pair so the plus and minus signal and for the high speed signals length match these on every layer that's this second rule about how does it look in the real PCB 
as an example, we will use this clock signal. Ideally, you would like to select here mask, then click here and click here. Also, what we would like to change is the are the units. At this moment, we use millimeters. So press Q to change to the mils. Now I can very easily go here, select this track, go here, report, measure selected object, and measure the length of the track, which is 22 mils. When I click on the second signal, I can very easily measure the length, 22 mils. So they are exactly the same, that's good. Then I can go on the different layer and measure it again. 17, 17. To make it easier, you can make a short cut for these measure selected objects and you can place it here on your toolbar. Then when I go here, 5 for 1. Oops. 5 for 1. Okay, I think you understand how you can measure the length on each layer. What I would like to show you, we follow this signal and then we go to this other part of this clock on this layer. This is what I wanted to show you. Signal travels from this direction, but we add the wave here. It's because the edges here, they will travel together, but the difference will be made here. That's why the wave is here. Always place the wave where the difference occurs. Always try to make the waves as small as possible, never create very big waves. So you can see this is probably one of the biggest waves what we do. Here is a small one. Here is a little bit bigger. Yeah, but something like this is maximum. Ideally, you would like to route differential pairs with no waves. This is the ideal example. And this is what you should be trying to do. In reality, it's not possible, especially because of position of these vias. In reality, in most of the cases, it will look something like this. And the first alternative, what you can use, are the small waves, what we were speaking about. To give you an idea what are the requirements for these waves, I went through some of the design guides which I have, and here is an example what some of them recommend. In case W is your drag width, then the width of the wave should not be bigger than three times the drag width. And the wave should not be higher than two times the space between the tracks. This just gives you idea about the real numbers, what you should be looking for when you are doing the waves. If the difference between the length of these two signals is bigger, you cannot achieve it with these small waves. Use the one big wave, okay? Ideally, what I always try to do is do it this way. This is the best way to try to length match the differential pairs. Go a little bit behind the wire and then go back. This is how most of your differential pairs should look. Now some bad examples. Don't use right angle corners, okay? Don't use 90 degrees corners when you are doing the waves. What's wrong with this? In this area, you will not have the required 
impedance. Differential pairs are designed because the tracks need to be routed together. Don't do this. I never do this. Okay? Try to design the layout the way. You don't have to do anything like this. They have to be routed together. Always. Don't do this. If you have to length match whole length of the differential pair, here are two bad things. First bad thing is right angles. The second bad thing is the distance between the waves should be bigger, much bigger. I will tell you in the next slide what the recommended values are. But I would like to show you one more bad example. I've seen it a couple of times. Never do this. Okay? Please. Some people try to language match one signal this way, the other signal this way. In this area, the differential pair is not routed together. In this area, you will not have the required differential pair impedance. Okay? So how to route them? Route them this way. Always route the differential pairs together. And when you have to do the waves, try to make this distance bigger and uh, don't use the right angles. Here you can see, again, from, from some of the design guides, I found these recommendations. So follow these recommendations. The space between the waves, see, four times track width, at least three times, ideally five times. Corners, you can see, 1.5 track width. The space here, 1.5. With. Keep space between waves. That's the rule number three. Don't forget, you need to keep the space between the waves also when you are routing single ended tracks. So just a one wire tracks. Don't do it like this. Okay? two bad things in this example. Right angle corners, too small space between the waves. What could be the problem with this? For example, crosstalk. Because if signals signal travels this way, it can actually spread through all this pattern because the lines are very close to each other. Better way to do it in this way. Keep at least three times drag width between the waves and uh, use the 45 degrees corners. This is much better. Five, at least five times drag width and big corners. Some people they use uh, round waves for the boards, what I've designed for all the CPU boards running at different uh, frequencies, I never had problems with using 45 degrees corners. So I use always only this. I don't use the round waves because it's quite difficult to adjust the size of the round corners. But maybe for very high frequencies, if the design guide say use round waves, then do so. Here is the general rule for the waves. Use 45 degrees wave space minimum 3 times drag width, ideal 5 times drag width. 
on the beginning of the layout I sometimes do these big large waves just to occupy the space and later when I'm finishing the layout instead of this one big wave I normally put there a lot of small waves in same area this area is exactly same but for quick space occupation I draw very easy just this one way and by the end I do it this way because I think this is better way to do it the rule number four length match buses and differential pairs here is example of a simple interface before you start doing length matching for a interface always read design guide design guide will tell you the things like for example what can be the maximum length of the tracks in this interface what can be the minimum length of the tracks in this interface what is the required tolerance between the tracks in this interface and what is the relationship between these tracks relationship it means for example how much longer or how much shorter some tracks can be comparing to other tracks usually the length matching look like this usually you have a data group and all the signals in the data group they need to be routed exactly same length or very similar length usually in this data group there are not only data signals there may be also signals like dqs or dqm you know this from the ddr3 interface then you have usually also different group of signals control signals command signals address signals and again in the design guide you will find what is the required tolerance between these signals in this group and what is the relationship between these signals in this group comparing to the data signals usually you also have a clock signal in design guide you will find requirements what is the relationship between clock and all the other signals sometimes the interface can be a little bit more complicated may look like this sometimes you may want to add uh, for example series termination resistors how to do the length matching in this case it's very important then that in this case you actually use the length for the length matching which is from this point to this point so the length which you use for length matching is this part here a1 plus this part here a2 and then the rule will be like a1 plus a2 need to be exactly same or very similar length like b1 plus b2 and it has to be exactly same length or very similar length as c1 plus c2 altium designer will not show you the length from here to here altium designer will show you on the only the length from here to here and the length from here to here so you may need to calculate it manually it's also important to say that the, the length here doesn't have to be exactly same as the length here so this resistor can move a little bit closer or a little bit further from this chip ideally you would like to place this resistor as close as possible to output yes different example sometimes you may want to use termination resistors connected to VTT termination voltage in this case the length which you use for the length matching is from this point to this point okay from the processor to the chip is this D length have a look into the design guide what are the requirements 
for this E length from this pin to this uh, resistor usually they tell you to keep it short differential pens you already know one important rule for differential parallel matching you remember it maximum difference between plus signal and minus signal is 5 mil there may be some requirements for the length matching between differential pairs in one interface sometimes it is required sometimes not if it is required usually you need to route all the differential pairs in this interface by the same length or very similar length sometimes also differential pair interface can be a little bit more complicated like this again when you do length matching for the interface like this you need to calculate the total length from here to here so the total length used for length matching is a1 plus a2 what is important here is this length here you need to keep exactly same length between this processor and this capacitor path for the plus signal and for the minus signal so this distance here and this signal this distance here has to be exactly same to make it clear here you can see a good example here you can see bad example AC coupling capacitors in this case are placed in same distance from the plus and minus pin in this bad example AC coupling capacitors are placed in different distance from the plus and minus pins let's have a look how length matching is done in a real PCB so you can imagine it better as the first example I will use this uh, DRAM bank zero data group and you just learn all the signals in a data group need to have exactly same or very similar length when you click here you can see in this small window all the signals which belong to this group and it shows also total length of these signals when you order them by the length you can very nicely see that the shortest signal has 700 mils and the longest signal has 702 mils and uh, this is a very special case when you can use these numbers directly for the length matching why it is so special because these signals are very simple these signals are point to point connection from processor path directly to memory path if you would like to do length matching for signals like this you cannot use this number because for length matching is important point to point connection so the length from the processor to the memory chip first memory chip from the processor to the second memory chip so exactly this length what is just here or what is just here not the total length total length is not important that's the reason why we use spreadsheets uh, we basically create a spreadsheet and we then go and uh, place into the spreadsheet exact length of the track on each layer and the spreadsheet will calculate the point to point path to path distance it can also compare some differences and check if the signals are in tolerance we use the spreadsheets uh, 
because uh, I found it very useful and also the manufacturers like Intel or AMD they will provide you these spreadsheets when you are working on their design so it's some kind of tech technique what is normally used for high-speed design interfaces there is another uh, thing why you may want to use spreadsheet because for example LinkedIn package Altium cannot use LangDIN package. What is LangDIN package? It's actually the distance from the silicon itself, from the silicon of the processor to this path. Sometimes there are big differences between these lengths and you have to include this distance in the package to your calculation. And also you need to be aware how Altium actually calculate this uh, total length because uh, sometimes they change the way how they calculate it and for example recently they include also the length in the wire in this calculation and then for example if I select this and I uh, try to measure what is the total length of these tracks which are here the number is completely different from this number 682 mils 700 mils that's why we prefer the excel spreadsheet we will speak about the excel spreadsheet next lesson when you do length matching you also need to be careful about one more thing I'll show you Altium doesn't recognize the situation if there is a track placed on a track so for example if uh, we calculate you see the length of this track here is 700 mils but what can happen you can for example by mistake do something like this okay it, it looks like everything is okay but have a look what is the total length 776 mils now you need to be very careful when you are doing the length matching you have to manually check all the tracks in high speed interfaces like this use this select click on a track go on a different layer and now you were you will very nicely see each individual track and if there is something like this two tracks on top of each other you will see it you need to then correct it you need to also look if the track for example goes oops directly from the middle of the wire yeah directly from the middle of the wire because then all the calculations will not be correct this is one of the things what Altium actually could improve in future I hope they will improve it in future back to our line matching examples and uh, this is a very nice interface to speak about there is a clock signal with series termination resistor in it if you need to length match interface with this kind of signals you will need to calculate the total length the total length of this signal is the length from this path to this path it is here plus the length from this path to this path it is here plus sometimes you may want to consider also the length in the series termination resistor so the length from this path to this path this is not very high speed interface 
so it was not required to lang match the signals very precisely but we still did lang match these data signals in this bus and uh, we made this clock signal a little bit longer than the data signals another example LVDS interface you can see from this table we length match all the LVDS signals to be almost exactly same length sometimes you don't have to do so precise length matching but for the interfaces which are connected to a connector you may want to do so precise length matching what do you think why because you never know what is going to be connected on the other side you never know how good designer designed the board on the other side so if you design your board as good as you can then even if the other board is not designed uh, the best way if there are some small mistakes it can still work very well together with your board so always try to design your board as good as possible next example is this uh, PCI Express interface with uh, AC coupling capacitors do you remember the rule? these signals need to be exactly same length so when I click here and measure this signal 192 it must be exactly same as this one 192 perfect sometimes when uh, you are doing lang matching you may be in situation like this you draw a track and then you need to go behind the wire and then back behind the wire and then back rather than drawing a big circle or big loop do it like this okay draw a couple of waves and then go straight back to the wire if you need to do lane matching for several tracks running in parallel rather than doing it this way you may want to consider do it this way this is uh, a better way to do it uh, here is much bigger space between the tracks so much lower crosstalk and it takes almost exactly same space as this one the last thing about this length matching rule and uh, I will use this uh, example which is here imagine you are doing layout for a high speed interface with signals d0 d1 d2 d3 d4 each of these signals is routed different way for example part of d0 signal is routed on top or bottom layer part of d0 signal is routed inside the pcb whole d1 signal is routed on top or bottom layer most of the D2 signal is routed inside the PCB now all these signals are perfectly length match all the signals they have exactly same length is this the right way to route high speed interface? no there is something what need to be improved what is it? you already should know what the problem with this kind of routing is because we spoke about it the thing is signal travels different speed on top and bottom layer comparing to the speed inside the PCB and what is the point of doing length matching we do the length matching because we would like to the signal arrive into destination at exactly same time 
So basically what we do, if the signal travels exactly same length, they will arrive at the same time. If they travel exactly same speed, if they travel different speed, then this is not true. So it means even if you length match all these signals here, because signal on this line will travel different speed than signal on this line, they will arrive in the destination in comple completely different time, even they, these signals are length match. But because they travel different speed, they will arrive in different time. I think you got it. What is the proper way to do it? Do it like this. When you are routing high speed interface, try to keep the length which is routed on top and bottom layer for all the signals in the group very similar. Okay? And try to keep the length for all the signals which is routed inside the PCB to be very similar. And I didn't speak about the length in wire. That's the next point what I'm going to speak about. That's the next rule. The rule number five. Route signal groups by same topology. You already know this rule. You can tell me what this rule means. I'm listening. It means that all the signals in one group have to be routed exactly same way. It means that, for example, all the signals from DRAM Bank 0 group, all the signals which are here, they start on one layer, layer 1, and then they all continue on same layer. They continue on layer 2. And then they continue again on same layer, layer 3. See? There are no tracks on layer 12 or layer 10. All the signals which are here in this group, they continue on layer 3. Then layer 2 and layer 1 again. Little bit more complicated example, this one. Here is a lot of signals. A lot of signals. All of these starts on layer 1, then they go on layer 2, continue on layer 3, then they are routed on layer 10, and layer 12, and layer 1. It's hard. It's sometimes very hard to route all the signals from one group exactly same way. But it's very important. I read this rule some time ago in uh, one of the Intel design guides. Since then I use it. I found it very very useful and uh, I use it also for the interfaces which are not high speed. For example, let's have a look on this MMC card interface, so SD interface. You can see this is not high speed interface but all the signals they start on layer 1, then they continue on layer 2, they continue on layer 10, then layer 3, and layer 12. I highly recommend you to uh, build a habit that when you route an interface or when you route signals in one group, route all these signals by exactly same way. It has some adv advantages. One of the advantages is that you know that all the signals they are routed in the uh, same environment. So they start on top or bottom layer, then they are all routed inside the PCB. The second advantage is, for example, that you can ignore the length in wire because all the signals they have exactly the same length in wire. There are more advantages. For example, when uh, your stack up thickness change, uh, 
you know that the length in via in all the signals change exactly the same way. If you do not route the signals same way, you will have problems when you change, for example, stack up. If you do not route signals in same group same way, you have to adjust the track length according to the length in the wire, according to the uh, signal delay on each layer. It is really, really making things very complicated. So if you don't want to make it complicated, use just this very, very simple rule and it will help you a lot. Route all the signals in one group exactly same way. Here is a simple example about how VIAS influence the total length of high-speed signals. In this example, we have two tracks. D0 track routed only on one layer, D1 track which is routed on top layer, then a VIA is used, then it is routed on bottom layer, another VIA is used, and it is routed again on top layer. The question is, what is the total length of D0 signal? That's very simple. You just measure it from the beginning to the end. What is the total length of D1 signal? It may look like it is simple. It may look like the total length of D1 signal is the distance of the track on the top layer from the beginning to this via plus the track length on the bottom layer from this via to this via plus the track length on the top layer from this via to the end. But it is really A plus B plus C. Is this the length of this D1 signal? No, it isn't because there is also H. There is also the length what is in these vias. Now you may think, oh, length in the vias, that's nothing. I'm going to show you it is really important number. It's not so small as you could think. What is the thickness of a standard PCB, do you know? 1.6 millimeter, so 63 mil. Now, in our case, the signal has to travel down with this via and up with this via. So the total length of this D1 signal will be actually A plus B plus C plus 2 times 1.6 millimeter. Or the other words, it will be A plus B plus C plus 126 mils. Now, Again, this may look like it's a small number. I'm going to show you IMX6 design guide. And in the design guide, the rules, length matching rules for data signals say length match the signals in each group by plus minus 25 mils. So the difference between the shortest and the longest signal, maximum difference is 50 mils. If you have a look on our calculations, from this you can see that even if you think you length match D1 and D0 and you didn't consider the length in the vias, then the real total length of D1 will be 126 mils longer than D0. And 126 mils is far away from the required tolerance of maximum 50 mils. As I explained, 
I don't really bother with this problem because I route all the signals in the group exactly same way and then all the signals will have exactly same length in the wire and you really don't have to care about this but I wanted to show you that uh, the length in the wire it is actually quite huge number for high speed signal length matching the rule number six be aware of tracks running in parallel you already know some uh, examples of this rule but uh, we are going to repeat it again always when you are drawing a track on your pcb be aware what are the neighbor tracks always try to keep as big distance as possible between the tracks some tracks are a little bit more important than other tracks let's have a look on some examples one of the most important tracks are differential pairs so always try to keep as big distance as possible between differential pair and other tracks always try to keep as big distance as possible between differential pair and differential pair again it's not simple sometimes it is very difficult but that's the way what you should be trying to achieve keep the big distance between these kind of tracks another important tracks are clocks it is a clock see how it is routed big distance between the clock and other signals a good technique to achieve this is uh, something like this for example when you are routing tracks d0 d1 d2 and clock and uh, you need to place some vias usually between these tracks then rather than placing via between d1 and d2 place the via between d2 and clock so then the distance is automatically achieved it's very useful and uh, another example are uh, asynchronous signals which are very important so reset interrupt and this kind of signals you can see here the reset signals are uh, routed away from buses from high speed signals as you can see the neighbor signals of the reset are power ok it changed almost never only on beginning only during power up then it stays on one level on off again a signal which is not changing yeah these are the neighbor signals of reset and uh, there is a big gap big clearance between the reset and other signals see how they are routed here and how they are routed here what is the distance here what is the clearance the distance here when we are speaking about the gap between two tracks I would like to point out very important situation this is our stackabon uh, module we have there a reference plane then signal layer and then another reference plane so what is important for us is this gap between the signal and it sometimes can be like 0.1 millimeter for mils when you are designing your own PCB stack up you can be in the situation like this so you use a reference plane then you put there a signal layer you put there another signal layer and then reference plane again and in this case you need to be aware that the crosstalk can be between signals on same layer but also the crosstalk can be between the signals running on different layers as you can see here if these tracks are running in parallel 
on different layers, there still will be crosstalk. Why? Because the distance between these tracks is the core thickness or is the prep thickness, and it can very easily be 0.1 mm for mils. So when uh, you are routing uh, or when you are using two signal layers above of each other, rather than route signals this way, try to route uh, signals on one layer vertically and on another layer horizontally. So they always cross. They don't run in parallel. Because we are speaking about this gap between the tracks, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to explain one of the reasons why I always start my layout with tracks wider than it is required and why I change it by the end of the design.